Welcome to VTO C Sectiona program. Today we are continuing with uh, the subject 18 ARC 43 Building Services 1, which is uh, water supply and sanitation for fourth semester BIAC. Uh, in the previous uh, lectures, I had uh, actually showed you the syllabus and also spoken to you about the various modules. Today we are going to discuss module 2. Module 2 basically has two parts. One is sewerage system where we are going to deal with uh, the various types of sewerages and how they are collected and the various materials and appurtenances used for collection of sewage, uh, sewer treatment plant and its space requirements. Along with it, there is another part in module 2 which is storm water management. Storm water management also has uh, uh, assessment and quantification of rainfall with uh, the drain, various drainage systems involved, collection, reuse of water within the project and reduction of load on the municipal system. And also we are going to deal with landscape drainage as well as rainwater harvesting. So this module 2 basically would continue after water supply and sources of water supply. So right here we are going to deal, today we are going to deal with uh, sewerage system now. Previous class, we had actually spoken about the various uh, environmental and health aspects in, fr right from history to water supply. Today, we are going to part with the first part of the module 2, which is sewerage system. Sewerage system basically uh, has, a, you know, a lateral clean out system along with how exactly we are going to diffuse all our waste right from our residences or our in uh, outputs to the main sewer line connections. So before we get into sewerage system and its various uh, other factors, first let me just give you a basic differentiation between water supply and sewerage system. Flow by gravity which is mostly through gravity is sewerage system. Sewerage system is designed as a open channel flow basically, but there could also be a cover. Most of it is suspended material and the release of gases is always noticed in sewerage system like hydrogen sulphide. There are two different types of uh, sewerage systems, one is storm water and the other is sanitary sewer. Sanitary sewer is uh, where we are basically dealing with a uh, wastewater uh, piping which basically comes from all your residences and then gets on to your wastewater treatment facility. Whereas storm water is where you have your own catch basins and from the catch basin it is along with the, the basic waste and debris that gets collected on your streets along with rainwater which flows into your storm, storm drains as well as streams. Before uh, we speak more into details with severity system, I just want to give you a brief about the basic terms which are going to be put up in this particular lecture, sewage. So what does sewage mean? Sewage is the liquid waste or the waste water which is produced as a result of usage of waste water. So, wastewater which has been utilized in residences, in uh, industries, in commercial practices is carried off by sewer drains in the form of liquid waste. So, that is called as sewage and the pipe or a conduit which basically carries the sewage is called as a sewer. It is generally closed and the flow takes pla place under gravity. Severage is a comprehensive term. This term is applied to collection of both the wastewater as well as conveyance of wastewater to the final disposal that is with or without treatment. So, without treatment also it is called as severage, with treatment also it is termed as severage. Severage also refers to the physical infrastructural facilities through which the sewage flows or even the runoff flow like storm water, melt water rainwater which basically happens through sewers. Severage also encompasses components such as pipe chambers, lift stations, receiving drains, treatment and disposal facilities, manholes, 
pumping stations, storm overflows and screening chambers of the combined sewer or sanitary sewer. It uh, actually ends at the entry to a uh, sewage treatment plant or at the point of discharge into the environments. So, until then it is called a sewerage from the from the point where it begins you know collection of waste water to the final disposal it is called as sewerage. There is something called a separate sewer system. This separate sewer system basically means where you are carrying sanitary waste water and other waterborne waste from residences, commercial spaces, industrial plants as well as institutions. But when it receives both waste water and storm water in one pipeline or one sewer, it is called as a combined sewer. When it is all individual to itself, then it is called as a separate sewer. Force main. This is basically to describe any kind of pressurized pipe that is conveying waste water. Infiltration is the seepage of ground water into the sewer system including your service connections. The seepage basically happens through defective or cracked pipelines, pipe joints, connections or even manhole walls. Inflow the rain uh, the storm water runoff connection to the sanitary collection system which causes an almost immediate increase in the wastewater flow rates is called as inflow. When the flow rate suddenly increases, when the pipeline suddenly has a lot of waste in it, then it is called as an inflow. An invert level, that is the lowest point of the internal surface of the sewer or the pipeline, where you basically have the lowest level of water that is called as invert level, when it is at the highest it is called as inflow. So, what are the components of wastewater? Basically, wastewater uh, can be categorized as domestic wastewater, industrial wastewater, storm water, and inflow or infiltration. Now, what is domestic wastewater? Domestic wastewater is any wastewater that actually comes out of residential buildings, offices, as well as institutions. The quality of these water uh, wastewater characteristics are approximately uniform, but the quality is different. Industrial wastewater is liquid, which is basically coming out of industries like the dyeing industry, paper making industry, fertilizer industry, the chemicals and lathering industries. The quality and quantity of both the wastewaters coming out of all these industries could be different industry to industry. Storm water basically includes surface runoff which is generated by rainfalls and street washes. Whereas, inflow or infiltration is any water that enters the collection system through direct or indirect means. Now, basically if you look at all the waste water exits from any household, you would have an exit from your toilets, kitchen sinks, dishwashers, bathing or shower cubicles, cloth washers and then there is also something called as storm water. So, this comes together as grey water and toilet and kitchen sink is basically categorized as black water. So, when black water and grey water combine together, they are called as waste water and these two combine together with storm water actually lead out into your sewer system. The toilet would have both urine and fecus, that is why that is considered as black water. Kitchen sink has a lot of oil infiltration in it as well as there could be detergents and anything that is harmful to, to our sewer system. Whereas, all these things are considered as grey water. So, this is a section of how exactly all your pipelines are connected to the main sewers. Now, consider this to be your bathroom section, that is the wet areas of your house. So, you have your lavatories or your toilets, your bathtub and your kitchen, alright. So, all these three come together along with your storm water drain, they combine here 
the, with the catch basin which is also your rain water uh, as well as your street washes which come together here and they all get into your sewer mains. The sewer mains are all connected to every street that is connected to your street and then from there it enters into your street let inlet. The from the street inlet and through the manhole it is connected to a private sewer and from the private sewer it is connected to your public sewerage system which basically ends the public and the private boundaries between the private spaces and the public spaces. So, if you look at it in a section now that is residential waste water which comes out of each of your rooms from where all your wet spaces and then you also have your roof and area drains like your garden spaces and lawns and all. So, that is one part you would have commercial places like offices and institutions which would also have their own toilets and street storm drains and both of them combine together and get involved as one or combine themselves as one and then enter into the main sewer. So, when they enter into the main sewer together before getting inside the you know the source of water then that is called as a combined sanitary waste as well as storm water pipe. Now, how do we classify all these sewers? The sewers or the pipelines are basically classified as domestic or industrial sewers. They are basically designed to carry any kind of wastewater which is generated from domestic establishments or small and medium sized uh, industrial establishments in a municipal area, but not the storm water. So, there is no connection to the storm water here. Storm sewers are de basically designed only to carry off the storm water as well as the ground, ground water, but it excludes the sewage from domestic and industrial. And combined is when it has both, they are designed to carry off storm water, domestic and industrial wastewater. So, one which does not have the storm water, sew, uh, storm water is called as domestic and industrial sewer. Storm sewer is basically when it is only dis ex excluding all the sewage, but having all the storm water only and combined is when this and this combine together to, be get, um, to connect it to the main pipeline. Now, what are the different types of uh, wastewater sewers? We have something called as sanitary sewer. This is where a sewer basically carries all the sanitary sewage which originates from domestic or industrial wastewater. And uh, storm sewage is when the surface runoff and the street washes are connected and combined is when it carries domestic industrial and storm sewage and house sewers are all your pipes which convey the sewage from plumbing system of a building to the ma main municipal sewage. So, this is a sanitary sewer like for example, this is your sink from where it gets connected to the main sewer and this sewer would have one air dent all right air vent and also there would be a lot of fat build up here because of the oils that are coming out of your kitchen sinks. So, you have to make sure that the pipe uh, di diameters are different here all right and storm drain is basically any street wash along with rain water which comes combines itself with it and then gets into the main sewer. <coughs> now, imagine this to be a business outlet and this business outlet would have its own toilets from where it actually flushes out all the water into the private surf service laterals. So, from all the laterals, all these laterals are basically connected through a manhole in case of uh, any kind of maintenance. From there, it is connected to the local main sewer line. From the local main sewer line, it again gets connected to the regional trunk line sewer and that connects you to the main wastewater treatment plant. For example, if this is your building outline, 
your private space or your upper private space actually ends here that is above the ground level and the lower public space begins here right from the curb you know considering the footpath and all coming together there. So, the after the clean out ok, after the clean out it comes together and joins until the main line sewer. Now, what are the pre problems that we face when it is lateral sewer which connects both your uh, storm water as well as your sewer system. It could be breaks in the pipes, cracks in the pipes, there could be roots which have overgrown from you know neighboring trees or plants and any joint which is separated and might have some developed some kind of a crude crack or something. Now, the, there are different types of sewers again as I mentioned lateral sewer is a sewer which receives discharges directly from the houses. So, anything that is connected to your houses is called as lateral sewer. Anything that connects your lateral sewer to the main or sewer is called as a sub main sewer because there would be one or more such sewers which are connected here. The main sewer is also called as a trunk sewer because this is going to receive a lot of discharge from many sub mains. And then the final one is the outfall sewer this discharges all the systems from all the collecting systems and conveys it to the point of final disposal and the final disposal could be any water body. So, that is how it is, this is the building sewer point 1, point 2 is the lateral one which would be there consistently through and through all the streets, point 3 is the main sewer you have your trunk sewer and then the intercepting sewer which connects to the wastewater treatment plant or to the water body. So, in case of any diagram that you have to show, you can basically <coughs> show it this way. This is the wastewater treatment plant alright. So, you have your residences, so they would have your their own house sewers the lateral sewers right and then the sub main sewer, the main trunk sewer and then the outfall sewer. So, typical sewer connection basically has the plumbing system which would have all the drains from your sewer laterals, the clean outs, a sidewalk and then the street. So, this whole thing combined together is called as a sewer lateral or the private lower level ok, lower level private space and which connects below the ground to the sewer main which is considered as public property. So, until here it is private and this whole maintenance actually comes unto the owner after which the maintenance from the street actually begins from with the municipal corporation. So, what are the different types of collection systems? The sanitary collection system is the first type, the storm water collection system is the second type, the combined collection system which would have both sanitary as well as storm water is called as the combined collection system. Then you have something called as partially combined collection system. So, there are four different types of collection system. Now, what is sanitary collection system? Sanitary collection system is where the load on the treatment plant becomes light because the pipes and their diameters are small and they are used as sewers. The natural water does not become polluted unnecessarily. The pumping of sewage is necessary, the system becomes economical and in this system maintenance is very high. The cleaning of sewers is very difficult because of the you know small diameter pipes. The stupor gra gradient is permitted to get a self cleansing velocity. So, the, the pipelines follow the gravity and they are like steep. Storm sewers basically do not float through the air, it only it flows um, uh, during the rainy season. So, during the dry season these sewers become uneconomical. 
the sanitary sewer is laid below the storm sewer so that storm water may not become contaminated in this way and the depth of sanitary sewer may become unnecessarily more. The separate sewer collection system here the sanitary sewage and storm water are carried separately all right in two sets of sewers. These sewers are conveyed to the wastewater treatment plant and the storm water is discharged into the water or river bodies without any treatment. The advantages of this kind of a collection system is the rainwater does not become toxic and it is more efficient than the combined system. The disadvantages are there could be problems of choking and the flushing system might be required for cleaning because this only works. Uh, one of the system works only when during the wet seasons. So, this is how a separated system is. You have your roof drains, you have your house water coming in as waste water. Okay. So, the roof drains are connected to the storm drains and that basically goes directly into the lakes. Whereas, the waste water pipe you know along with any outflows coming out of your lakes would fall into your sanitary sewers and this enters into the treatment plant. So, that is a sketch of a separate sewer system where you have your sanitary sewers separately and then you have your treated wastewater uh, plant or the rainwater plant. Uh, pipeline sewer separately. So, the rainwater runoff basically goes and connects itself directly until the source of water and then all the sanitary sewers basically come until the wastewater treatment plant get treated and then are let out into the river. So, there is uh, an excess of pipeline that is needed for this kind of a system because it is a long process and it connects all the lateral as well as main sewers into the trunk sewers until it connects into the treatment plant and then after the treatment only it is let out into the river. Now, what is a combined collection system? A combined collection system is where the maintenance cost is very low, the storm water reduces the strength of the sewage because of dilution. And due to single pipe laying, the system is economical. This is also considered as one of the most economical system and um, because it is single pipe, all right. But it is easy to clean as it is of larger size and the diameter of the pipelines are uh, bigger. There are less chances of choking the sewer because the size of sewers are larger. And due to extra quantity of sewage, the load on the treatment is unnecessarily increased. Now, what happens in this system is the pipelines are huge, right? So, the diameters are larger, and the storm water, which is the rain water and the uh, you know street washes, basically get unnecessarily polluted. So, that is one of the disadvantages here, and this gets easily silted if not properly designed. So, you have to keep in mind with respect to the design of this kind of a system, and in this dry, dry weather, the discharge becomes very low and it also creates a lot of foul smell. The system becomes uneconomical when pumping and the pumping is required when the lifting of the sewage to the ground level. In case of heavy rains, the sewer might overflow and it may put public health in danger. So, the advantages as I mentioned, they are le uh, less construction cost because of the larger diameter pipes. There will be no choking problems, the strength of the toxic water could be reduced. Disadvantages are due to the sewage, the toxicity of the storm water will increase, initial cost of piping will be very high, the handling and the maintenance pro would have a lot of problems. So, this is how the combined system is. So, you have your roof drains, you have your household water pipes and then the storm water pipes along with uh, any uh, overflows of your lakes and water bodies which might all uh, you know again come together into one pipe and that pipe would connect you to the treatment plant. 
the combined sewer system during a heavy rain operation basically would have like for example, if this is the sewer what basically happens is the mixture of rain water and sanitary waste water enters into the sewer okay, right that is when it is called as combined sewer. Once it enters the mixture flows okay, over a dam to the river when the capacity exceeds. So, if the rain water there would be a level at which the water is supposed to flow if the level exceeds because of the rains it will change its direction of flow and enter into another over wire all right or the mixture discharges from the outfall and enters into the river and from here this goes connects itself to the wastewater treatment plant where both the mixture of rain water as well as sanitary wastewater is connected. This is a combined sewer system during a dry weather. So, during a dry weather it basically comes connects itself and then goes easily into the treatment plant alright. But when there is a wet weather what happens is there would be a lot of runoff right. So, due to the storm water runoff there could be an overflow. So, this overflow could also be let out into the river or the nearest water body and the rest would be led into the treatment plant. So, that is how it is during dry weather it is different and during uh, wet weather it is different. Now, for a combined sewer during dry weather basically both of them come together and then the sewer enters into the water treatment plant. So, there would be a dam here only when it overflows the outfall pipe would creak and then this would enter into the water body. But then when it is separate basically during a dry weather the downspouts would all be connected to the storm water which would outfall peep to the creeks and then the sewage would be connected to the treatment plant. Now, what is a partially combined collection system? The size of the sewers basically remains reasonable in this kind of a system. This system is self cleansing because of the velocity which is attained in this system. The storm water is diluted and the sanitary sewage and the quantity of sewage does not exceed the kind of limit that a combined uh, system basically would have. Partially combined system has a combined portion of the system which is difficult to attain self cleansing velocity in the dry season. If pumping might be required in combined portion extra quantity is to be pumped so that the load is increased and then the maintenance also happens. So, storm water increases the load on the treatment plant. This system basically is uh, helping a lot in terms of decreasing the load from a combined sewerage system because only the water from initial rainfalls is added to the sewage water and after that everything else works more or less like the separate system only. The advantages of this kind of a system is the size of the sewers are not very large as some portion of storm water is carried through open drains. The combination of the advantages of both the systems are seen here, silting is completely eliminated in this system. The storm water is less toxic well compared to the previous two systems. The disadvantages are the storm water is unnecessarily putting a lot of load on the treatment plant to extend and the toxicity, toxicity of the sewage water increases. Now, if you look at this particular uh, diagram you see the roof line all right. So, these are the rain water pipes the RWP are the rain water pipes all right and then they all come and connect onto their sewage pipes. The sewage pipes and the rainwater pipes are basically connected to the fall water sewer and then anything that is uh, coming out of the surface all right gets into the surface water drain. So, that is how a combined uh, uh, sorry a partially separate system of underground drainage works. <coughs> but when you are going to combine uh, separate them, so basically what happens? when you separate them is 
right at this inspection chamber, they come and meet, they converge there and then the foul water does not get connected to the surface water. And all the rain waters pipelines are connected to a separate system from where the surface water sewer is moving forward into the treatment plant. Now, what are the different ways in which we collect and reuse uh, our refuse? Depending upon the area that is to be drained, depending on the topography, depending on the hydraulic features of the area, the location of the treatment works, the severage system is adopted for each of the facilities. So, there are various types of patterns of which we are going to learn about the five different important patterns. The first pattern is fan pattern. Here the entire severage flow is directed to one point where the treatment plant is located. A fan like network of converging all the main sewers is laid in this pattern. Advantage is that only one unit of the treatment plant is required. Development of surrounding area increases the load on the treatment plant. There is something called as interceptor pattern also. So, interceptor pattern is where the sewers are independent intercepted by large size sewers and are laid along the water course. Now, the sewage is carried to the treatment plant from here and if the quantity of the storm water is more, storm regulations are provided at suitable points. So, at every point there would could be a checkpoint. Perpendicular pattern, this is very similar to the main trunk sewers, they are perpendicular to it and they prove useful for separate as well as partially separate systems. They are impracticable for combined system as it requires a lot of treatment at every point of outlet. The radial pattern is where the sewers are laid radially outwards from the center of the city. They are useful for cities where facilities of sewage disposal by land treatment are available. The zonal pattern is where the city is divided into suitable zones and a separate interceptor is provided for each of the zone. It is also economical for cities which are actually put up on sloping hills. So, now getting to each of the patterns, perpendicular pattern, here the sewers carry storm water so as to seek the shortest possible path, alright. So, what we are going to do here is basically try to see which is the shortest path to the natural water courses. The shortest possible path to the natural water courses is obtained when the sewers are laid perpendicular to them. And this pattern basically follows this is suitable for separate system and partially separate system in which both storm water can be directly disposed of without any treatment. But it is not suitable for combined system because it is very difficult to treat the sewage due to the large number of outlets and secondly it pollutes the natural course of water. So, this is how the perpendicular system is. You have your lateral system. Okay, and then you have your main systems all right, and that is a water body or the river. So, it would be directly perpendicular to the pattern of movement there. Interceptor pattern is where the sewers are intercepted by large size sewers which are laid along the water carrying sewage to a common point where it is disposed with or without treatment. If the quantity of storm water is large, overflows should be provided as shown in the next figure, allowing the excess sewage to spill over the natural water courses through outlets where existing before the interceptor. Now, that is your lateral sewer, that is your zone boundary, your lateral sewers and then these are the interceptors. Before they are let out into the pumping station through an overflow, the interceptor pattern is one of the second most prominent pattern. Radial pattern is employed if the sewage is to be disposed of on a land around the town only. Here large number of outlets are provided, the sewers are laid radially outwards towards the center of the city, therefore this is called as radial because it follows the shape and form of the city. 
In this pattern, the suburbs are served by relatively smaller and shorter lines of sewers, which makes it very economical for the town if it is of a small size town. The main disadvantage of this system is there are large number of disposal works that are required. So, like for example, if there is an irrigational field there, all right, lot of irrigational fields at uh, edges and the water body flows in the op almost like in the opposite direction of the town and the town is here, right. So, from where all the pipelines are connected radially outward and from there they are connected on to one large out side circle which actually disposes it off to the treatment works. The fan pattern is where the city is situated near a river which is one, one, one side of the fit only. The sewer is laid in such a way that the whole sewage flows to a common point and from the common point it is taken to the treatment plant. In this pattern the number of converging main sewers are laid which form a fan like shape from which it derives its name. The only advantage of this system is this system works when you know if the diameter of the sewer increases as the sewage moves due to which the diameter of the main trunk is larger and it increases the um, overall cost of this pattern. The fan pattern has a diameter of the sewage increasing as the sewage moves. So, as the sewage follows a pattern of movement, so the diameter also keeps increasing for which the diameter of the trunk should be uh, increasing too. So, when this happens the overall cost of this pattern also increases. The second drawback of this pattern is that if the outlawing suburbs develop, it increases the load on the treatment works which restricts development. So, fan like pattern is supposed to be put up where a city or a town is situated very close to a water body which is one side of the city only and it flows to a common point all the water flows to one point from where it, it can be directed to a treatment plant. Here the number of converging main sewers are laid which forms fan like and from which it derives its name. The advantage of the system is it works only as a single unit of treatment. So, you would have the water course here right and then the lateral system, the sub main system and then the main system. The last pattern is the zone pattern. Now, this zone pattern is where the interceptor pattern only, um, only one large size intercepts right. Here the whole entire sewage intercepts. Now, this because of which it is overloaded and this overloading can be removed by providing more number of interceptors at each of the zones. Now, this type of pattern is suitable for uh, you know slopey spaces or slopey areas as hilly spaces than flat areas. So, there would be a lot of interceptors like uh, uh, low level interceptors, intermediate level interceptors as well as high level interceptors from where it gets pumped into the treatment works and from where the outfall would be to the drainage system. Right? So, this is how a combined uh, sewer system is. Now, these are the house sewers, the main sewers, right? The, that is an urban drainage system that is a receiving water treatment plant right and the water treatment plant and this is how that is connected. <coughs> now, this is a separate sewer system connecting itself to the rain water which enters into the water courses and the treatment uh, the uh, sewer system basically connects to the treatment plant. In the combined system where all of them come together into one pipeline and then they are received at one course and then they enter into the treatment plant. The wastewater collection system basically would have many house connections right. So, these house connections are called as lateral sewers. Now, from all these lateral sewers it flows into the sub main sewer 
through a main sewer into the sewage treatment plant and from the sewage treatment plant enters into the water body or into the outfall. So, the collection system is basically when you see it, when you see the whole section across the road, you see there are houses here and there are houses there, that is the street, right. So, all, all these lateral systems are connected through manholes, you see a lot of manholes there, right. Now, these manholes also called as chambers, all right would be connected to each of your house connectors. So, from each of these house connectors right under your streets they would be connected which would lead you to the main sewer. So, typical layout of any house connection is like these are the plots, plot 1, plot 2, plot 3, plot 4 likewise right and then you have half an inch diameter pipeline there. Okay, and as it increases from the lateral to the main, main and uh, sub main lever, it becomes 1 inches, from 1 inch it changes to 2 inch to 8 inch depending on the kind of town as well as the outflow and from 9 inch it enters into the 9 inch water supply sewer which would be higher, the, higher than the 9 inch diameter. The typical layout of a manhole is like for example, if this is your, this is a plan of your house, right and this is a landscape. So, you have surface wash here and then you also have your sanitary wash, right. All of them come together through the house sewer and enter into the manhole. So, this manhole would be covered through the walkway. And then that would also have another lateral sewer entering in from the other directions and all of them would be combined together as one form before it enters into the um, drop off. Thank you.